All right, everyone, thank you again for joining us today for properly conditioning a carbon filter. Uh, just a quick note, uh, this was the tip of the month in August uh, newsletter. So those who may not be subscribed to our newsletter, please do. We do have tips come out every month, and uh, this happens to coincide with our webinar. So a quick background on carbon filters. So carbon filters are an inline filter, uh, and the reason we call it a carbon filter, or you know, many commonly uh, refer to as a charcoal filter, is it has an activated carbon media inside. And activated carbon is used to filter out impurities. Uh, many of you have seen this probably in your water filters you might use at home or in gas masks or other applications. Uh, but in our case, uh, the use is for getting the most accurate measure measurements of methane gas. So quick note on today's agenda, we're going to start off with the importance of conditioning a carbon filter, uh, followed by how to properly condition the carbon filter. And once we're all conditioned, um, we'll look at how to connect the carbon filter for use in the field. And then we'll close out with, you know, when do we discard the filter and replace it with a new one. So starting from the beginning here. Uh, why is it important to condition your carbon filter? Uh, because it, it it fulfills the application that we're doing. We want to make sure we get the most accurate methane reading using the analyzer. Now, when we condition a carbon filter, we're trying to make sure that the filter removes all the other hydrocarbons from the sample gas. Now, what do we mean by hard hydrocarbons? Uh, if you look at the composition of methane, we have carbon and hydrogen. Uh, there are many other compounds in the gas that, uh, or that could be in your gas, that have a similar makeup that are carbon and hydrogen. So that is a hydrocarbon. Uh, some of these uh, examples are hexane, pentane, propane, butane, and, and there's there's many more. Uh, but the key here is that they are made up of carbon and hydrogen. So. The reason we remove these car hydrocarbons from the sample gas is to make uh, because they can have an artificially high uh, reading effect on the sensor in the instrument. So again, it's the similarity in the makeup of the gas of these different compounds uh, that causes that. So a couple, a couple other quick notes on properly uh, conditioning your carbon filter. When we go to condition our carbon filter, you know, it's highly recommended that you use a certified calibration gas. And really what we're using, looking for is a high purity methane. Um, and the reason we do that is we want to saturate the activated carbon media in the filter with a gas that is basically methane and no other hydrocarbons. The reason being <clears throat> is we want to make sure the filter uh, is completely saturated with methane to the point where it's letting the methane flow through freely. That way, when we go to the field to take a sample, the carbon filter itself will then be absorbing all the other hydrocarbons because we've saturated it with the high purity methane. So a quick note on connecting the filter for conditioning. So in this particular picture, um, you'll notice that the filter itself has a direction arrow, and that arrow is in the direction of the actual gas flow. So you want to make sure that the arrow points towards the inlet port of the analyzer. So in this, in this image, the left side of the filter will be connected to the analyzer, and the right side of the image will be connected to the hose from the regulator of the high purity gas bottle. So here we have an image that shows us the instrument, the carbon filter, the regulator, and the gas bottle. So the blue arrows show the direction of the gas flow. So we'll start from the source of the gas here. We have uh, the calibration gas, 
it's then flowing through a regulator. That way we don't overpressurize and, and overflow the instrument. That gas flow goes through the hose and then into the carbon filter. The red arrow indicates the directional arrow that's on the filter itself. And it goes into the inlet port of the instrument. Um, what you'll notice on the screen here, if you can see that on the instrument, is uh, basically ambient air conditions. Uh, no methane, no CO2, uh, around you know, 20 and a half to 20, 21 percent oxygen, and the remainder balanced gas of about 80 percent. So ambient conditions, we haven't opened up the bottle yet to let the, the gas through. Now, once you open the regulator and start letting the, the calibration gas through the filter, what you'll notice is it will take a lot longer for the reading to stabilize. And the reason that's, that's occurring is the media in the carbon filter is absorbing the methane as it goes through. We're filling up the pores in the activated carbon media with methane. That way, you know, in the future, the methane will flow through freely and it will pick up the other hydrocarbons in the gas. So on the screen, uh, you'll see 49.3 on the, the bottle. It's a 50% methane bottle. Um, we're just about at a stabilization point. And you'll notice this in the field, too, as you go ahead and condition your, your carbon filters. So a note here on, on connecting the filter after you've conditioned the carbon filter. So what you want to make sure you do is, if you look at the diagram below, you're going to connect the carbon filter between the water trap filter and the inland port of the analyzer. Uh, and the same rules kind of apply for the water trap filter here. So we want to make sure the carbon filter stays dry. Uh, moisture in the carbon filter uh, you know, does not does not help it at all. Really, at that point, you'll want to discard your your carbon filter. So, you'll have uh, your hose that connects to your well or your sampling device in the field. That hose will go to the water trap filter. After the water trap filter, you'll have a length of the hose going to the carbon filter. After the carbon filter, to the inlet port of the instrument. And you'll want to keep an eye on that that length of hose between the water trap filter and the carbon filter. If you see any condensation buildup in there, um, you know, you'll know at that point it's time to switch out the water trap filter. That way you just, you'll remove the moisture out before it gets to the carbon filter. So one of the biggest questions we get is, is when do I need to change out my carbon filter? or how do I know it's been saturated with the other hydrocarbons that I'm trying to strip out for my sample. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the key things for us to know to everyone on the call is every site is different. Um, you know, every site has different amounts of the other hydrocarbons that could be affecting the gas uh, readings. So there isn't a, you know, uh, a, like a prescriptive length of time we can give you on how long your carbon filter is going to last. Uh, you know, one of the things to note is you know your site better than anybody else. Uh, you know what your well should be reading uh, when, when it has a properly conditioned carbon filter and you're getting a good methane rating. Um, you know, we can't tell you what it, what it should read. So that's one of the things you need to keep an eye on. You know, this filter does not change color when it gets to a saturation point. So there's no visual indication there of when to discard your carbon filter and condition the new one and put it in line. Uh, what you need to keep an eye on is look at your methane readings on your wells or your probes or whatever you're, you're taking your samples on. Take note of what your good readings are. Um, if those start to get artificially high, uh, you know, each different type of compound has a different effect and there isn't a scale that can be applied to that. So some may jump dramatically high, uh, some may creep up slowly. Um, you know, an easy indication is if, if your methane goes to chevrons, you know, that's, that's a good, very good indication. Um, your filter is saturated and the other hydrocarbons are getting through. 
Uh, and as noted earlier, earlier, if the filter gets wet, um, and you need to discard that filter and, and uh, condition the new one. It's going to adversely affect the operation of the filter itself. So, um, you know, this, this is a fairly quick presentation. Uh, we did touch on some very important points here for using the carbon filter. And um, what I'd like to say at this point is thank you for attending.